We'll get started with Anthony Chang. Hey, D, how are you? Hey, Anthony, what's going on, bro? Too much, man. Um, you've been a part of a bunch of different type of seasons, lockout shortened seasons, last season getting suspended and going to the bubble, and that was unique. How, how unique has this year been in your eyes, and what, what have been the biggest challenges? I mean, there's never been nothing like this season. Obviously, this is um, it's new, uh, uncharted waters for everybody. But, um, you know, the, 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 the thing that I miss the most is just the opportunity to, uh, to bond and to grow. You know, I think uh, our, biggest, uh, our biggest strength is that, you know, throughout the season, um, you know, we, uh, you know, continue to, you know, build, uh, you know, that bond. Um, on and off the court, you know, uh, you know, iron sharpens iron, you know, it's something that we say. So, you know, we're actually still a team that in 2021 still like to get out there and practice and mix it up. And, and, um, and we call it hunger games and, and just create that, you know, that mentality of, you know, competition and, 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 you know, playing at a high level, um, you know, all the time. Um, so that's something that's been taken away from us, obviously, with the schedule and just the opportunity to spend time with my guys. You know what I'm saying? We we, we take pride in, you know, really having relationships that go beyond the game of basketball. You know, um, you know, I, I consider all these guys um, like little brothers to me. So, you know, the time on the golf course that we had, um, the time to, you know, just go hang out and, and shoot the shit a little bit. Um, you know, just the time to spend time with Bam and his mom and, you know, just those things that I have the opportunity to do with a lot of these guys have been taken away. And I think those things actually really contribute to, you know, the way we are able to come together and play the game of basketball uh, when it counts most. And I, I'm sorry to start this line of questioning again for another season, but you've been, you've said for the past few years that you want that a night with friends and family, you know, to be there, you know, whatever, whenever is the end for you. Is that you going to come this season or are you still undecided of, of what the future holds for you past this year? Man, I just, you know, take it one day at a time and, um, you know, we'll figure it out. Um, the goal now is to win a championship. Um, and then, you know, we'll go from there. Um, I can't really think past today. Um, and I've been told just to take it one day at a time. And, you know, when I get to the summer, that's when I think about that. So you know, that's, the, that's the advice I'm going to take from a wise man. Perfect. Thank you, D. Uh, next, we'll go to Tim Reynolds. Hey, D. How you doing, man? Tim, what's going on? How you doing? Good, good. The, the um, last year's Hall of Fame class finally gets enshrined next weekend. And you obviously played against Cove, against Timmy, against KG. Other than being three of the toughest guys to ever walk the planet and three of the best players to ever live, was there something else that jumped out at you about those guys, either collectively or individually, just that just separated them and made made greatness even greater. Tough guys, you said. Yeah, well, tough, elite, all of it. Just was there something uh, about two, two, two of those guys? I would probably say I consider tough guys, and that's more so mentally tough. And one of those guys just do a lot of this. That's not <laughs> tough at all. So we we going this this the 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 definition of tough guy. Don't go by guys that do this. You know that, Tim. So I understand. I want to take KG. You probably want to take KG off that tough guy list. Now, great basketball player. <laughs> great basketball player. Yes. Um, you know those guys. Those guys' competitive spirit. Um, you know those guys. Uh, you know the way they led their teams, all in different ways. You know, um, obviously, you know Kobe was a guy that basically said, uh, you know, I'm a lead. I'm going to knock down every wall. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to push every brick. Um, and you guys just get on board and follow. And, and, and if I can implement, you know, my mentality and, and, and my heart into you guys, then we'll be all right. You know, that's the way Kobe, you know, did his thing. I think Tim Duncan quietly was just a quiet assassin. You know, just one of those guys that didn't say much. Um, and those guys probably pissed you off more than anybody. He's not going to talk to you, not going to say much. And at the end of the night, he's going to fry you like chicken. He's going to have 30 or 15 and they're going to win the championship. Um, you know, obviously KG chose is a route that I really don't, you know, condone, you know what I'm saying? A lot of that talking and disrespect, but, uh, you can't take away from what he's done on the basketball court and who he's been as a basketball player. Um, obviously, you know, coming in at such a young age, um, and from the right, from the get go, you know, being able to dominate this game of basketball on both ends of the floor, you know, you talk about two way player. He was one of the first guys to be able to do it at six eleven. you know, talking about guarding one through five and just the way he was disruptive on defense and then took it to the offensive floor and just approached both ends of the game, you know, with the same, you know, mentality and aggressiveness. So, you know, all those guys are great basketball players and, um, you know, God rest the soul of Kobe, man. Um, you know, those guys definitely deserve to be in the hall of fame. 
Like don't be loosely um, throwing, don't be loosely throwing around tough guy, Tim. I understood. To you, there ain't they're, they're all playing for second, and you know this. <laughs> so you, you you know that. So I appreciate. Um, I I wanted to follow up with something just as important. Where, where's your golf game at these days? It sucks, bro. It sucks. I'm actually going to involve. I'm actually going to invest in a golf simulator. COVID has pushed me to the point where I think I have to invest in a golf simulator. With the way our schedule has been this year, and um, you know the travel and the games and stuff, I've actually taken a, not one step back, but probably three steps back in golf. Sorry to hear that, bro. Oh, yeah, I'm just wasting my money on my membership right now. I'm I'm happy to let you take my money anytime you want. No, nah, I'm telling you, I can't take nobody money right now. <laughs> I I really can't. Thank you, Dick. Thanks. All right, next we go to Ira Winderman. Ira. Hey, UD, how are you? I don't condone how Jimmy spoke to you the other day. That's fine. You've actually <laughs> spoke to me far, far worse, including a locker room in Atlanta once when he threatened to kill me. And I, I didn't tell you your ass couldn't play basketball, though, because I ain't never seen you play. I, I would never say nothing like that until I see for sure. Uh, Jimmy was right. We'll end the debate right there. Hey, a couple of things. Um, You've had a lot of different roads with your teams to the playoffs, but never anything like this play-in tournament is a possibility. LeBron last week came out against it saying, you don't go through an entire season and have to go through that. Luca, Mark Cuban said the same thing. As the reality looms out there for your team, what are your thoughts on the play-in? I don't want to be in it. I don't want that to be a part of our situation going into, you know, the next phase of the season. You know, I'm hoping we don't have to, you know, end up in that situation. And I, and I do think it's a little, it's a little silly. You know what I mean? I don't know who came up with it. I'm not an analytical guy. I'm sure they can bring all kinds of numbers and, you know, all kinds of, you know, stats that'll say, oh, this is the best way to do it. And, you know, with this, that, and the third and all kinds of data and shit. And then I'll be like, oh, okay, but that doesn't matter to me. As a basketball player, as a guy who's been in this league a long period of time and just seen this league grow and so many different things about this league that's catapulted us to this point that we are today, I think it is taking a step back. You know what I'm saying? Especially after the bubble and just the short and off season to put teams in a position to have to be in a play and especially guys like ourselves and the Lakers who basically slugged it out to the end. Right. You know what I'm saying? And to be here in this situation saying we might have to be in a play in. Uh, yeah, it's a little, it's a little unfortunate, but you know, we're not the type of team that's going to whine about it. Like whatever you want to do, put it in front of us and we'll figure it out. And then one question to follow up on what Anthony asked, because we like to harp on things like this. Um, unless you would appear in a game, this actually will not count as your 18th season, uh, according to the NBA statistically. Um, will you nudge Spo before we, before the heat play in Detroit by the end of the season to, to get, add this to your list of seasons? I mean, I, I haven't thought about it, but I mean, I'm sure Spo and, 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 you know, our guys, you know, keep those things, uh, you know, close to, close to hand and, and understand, you know, uh, the importance of that. But, uh, you know, for me, if we don't win the Detroit game and I got in, I, they don't, it, just, it really wouldn't matter. You know, my mm -hmm. thing is let's win out this season. Let's get this best playoff spot we can possibly get. And, and let's go in here and, and try to get it done. Um, you know, but I'm sure Spo will figure out a way to get me in there for, you know, five seconds and I grab 10 rebounds. <laughs> All right. You win again. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, D. Um, next, we go to Cooper Moorhead. Hey, D. I was hoping to get your perspective on um, on this. The, the way this team defends, I know it's not one-to-one -one because there's more switching. It's obviously a different era, but it, it, it seems somewhat similar to – the team Spo coached when Spo was just starting out this first four or five years with how aggressive it is, creating steals, getting out of transition off the defense. I think it's just a part it, of our Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Well, I'm just asking, is, is it similar to, to what his defense was like, you know, 10 years ago, and especially in a league where a lot of teams have gone more conservative defensively since then? Well, I'm going to be honest with you, Chris. I don't even know what the hell the defense was like 10 years ago. This season started <laughs> running together on me. And all the defenses starting to look the same. <laughs> but what I will tell you is, you know, what we do a great job is is, is coaching our personnel. You know what I'm saying? And, and we have um, Swiss Army Knives guys on defense. You talk about a guy like Bam, who, in my opinion, is going to be should be the defensive player of the year. Um, you talk about uh, Trevor Ariza, who's a who's a guy who can guard you know multiple positions and switch. Uh, you talk about uh, KZ, um, and we just got. Excuse me, we just got multiple guys that can guard multiple positions. And in today's game, you know, that's a luxury. Um, so the more of those kind of guys we got, the more creative we can be with our schemes and flat defenses out, defenses out and make them take bad shots. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. 
And next we go to Cristo Saltas with SDNA Greece. Hello, UD. Hope you are doing well. Hey, how are you doing? I'm fine, thank you. I would like to ask you about uh, BAM and his, pro his progress through the years. What is the most impressive part uh, from your perspective about his progress and what is his, uh, his potential for, for, the, for the next years? BAM? Yes. Oh, man. I mean, sky's the limit for BAM. I think the thing that BAM does, does the best is that he listens. You know, he actually listens and he tries to apply the things that, you know, we give him. You know, for me, I, at this stage of the game, you know, I hate wasting my time. So, you know, when I sit down and I spend time with BAM, whether it's on film or whether it's on the court or in the weight room, um, you know, I know it's not falling on deaf ears and I know it's going to get applied. You know, um, he's a real student of the game. Um, and I think, you know, his passion. Um, you know, it's beyond the game of basketball. You know, you talk about growing up, you know, how he grew up in, in, in a trailer home and a single mother. You know, I think his strongest, uh, you know, uh, you know, asset is his heart. You know, a kid that has heart like that, um, I tell him all the time, you got to have enough heart for everybody. And then you see out there on the basketball court, the way his play um, just lifts our level uh, defensively and just takes us to a whole nother level as a team. He can be the next uh, Udonis Haslam of the Heat through the years, or he can be the face of this team. Definitely, you know, definitely, no, no doubt. He's not as handsome as me, but you could, you could try to put his face somewhere around here, and hopefully, you know, it'll, it'll catch on. But yeah, he, he could be, he could try to be the face. Thank you very much. Simple like that. You see that? You need that to be the face. All right, you do. That's it. Thank you, sir. All right, guys. Thank you. All right, everyone. That concludes today's availability. Thank you.